Now, children are failing to adapt to online lessons. The Executive Director of Uganda National Consumers Organization, Robin Akatiritimba, says that the online lessons benefit mainly those in urban areas, leaving many out of the system. Kai has more details in this report. The outbreak of COVID-19 has retarded the education system, leaving many children subjecting to aggressive marketing. This has been disclosed by the executive director, Uganda National Consumers Organization, Robin Akaitiritimba, who also proposed for a mass vaccination of Ugandans against COVID-19. If we are going to prepare for children to go to school, we need to be looking at immunization now, now. But we also know that many parents are not even immunized. They are not even, uh, they don't support immunization. So work to promote immunization should be happening now. Uh, but also, most importantly, for a long-term strategy, we need to have these children in school. We need to have children in school. And now we are thinking about learning that is not physically in the classroom. Robina Kaitiritimba says parents have been left with the responsibility of parenting their children, which needs a lot of financial muscle, hence subjecting their children to child labor. And the government pro promised that we would have radios for children to learn. We have not seen those radios, we have not seen the TVs. And children have lost, now I think they are going to lose two years altogether. And if you lose two years and others have had two years, that means that you, the two years for you are erased. So that, of course, there are other health matters like children who live in slums, they don't have water, they don't have a place to be, and this is one of the things that we need to really be looking at. Uganda National Consumers Organization conducted a mini survey about children in the lockdown and discovered that children are psychologically stressed. The constitution of course says children are entitled to favorable conditions to education. This of course has been violated by various schools adopting um, online teaching without favorable conditions, say, like um, internet being provided or enabling gadgets, say, like smartphones or computers. And that means there are many children who are left out because of um, trying to adopt to digital migration in education. Talibita says parenting has become more challenging because of the social welfare despite the stimulus package for the underprivileged from government. Parenting has become very challenging because of the social welfare. And I think the times of COVID require of parents to have a lot of resources, a lot of financial uh, muscle to enable them to even ensure the right to food or healthy food of their children is upheld. Government has come up with a relief aid, food aid, financial aid, or a stimulus package to look at or try to cushion the most vulnerable people. And uh, of course, we all know that that financial contribution from government is not sustainable. Prosecuting places where young children are being subjected to child labor has been emphasized, and the public asked to tip such cases to the relevant authority. There is an increase in early marriages and pregnancies among school children, an issue that might lead to drop out. Is the toll free lines that we have for reporting these violation cases. Sometimes people call and nobody is there to pick. Some of them are even not active. So we call upon government to activate these toll free lines and let there be people who will receive the calls and they'll quickly take action. Government has been urged to put in place enabling mechanisms to enable children go back to school with funding of remand homes. So that Kai Robert Boita, UBC News. Well, thank you so much, Sudat Kai and Robert Waiter, for that story and children and what is happening today.